Hey guys, welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. So today, I'm going to be doing a book tag because I don't have anything to review at the moment, but I definitely wanted to do a video today. So some weeks ago, Hey Little Thrifter, who is a really great uh, booktube reviewer. She's my uh, go-to source for reviews on vintage horror. Vintage horror from the 70s and 80s and 90s. So she did this tag. The tag was created by Book Tag You're It and it's called the Spoopy Book Tag. Now, it's a really cute name, right? But we're going to be talking about horrifying and terrifying books that I've read that fit these questions. And it was nice to go into my library and kind of reminisce <laughs> with uh, some of my scariest reads. But before we get into that, I just wanna say that I love your comments on my videos. I read all of them and I try to respond to all of them. So from now on, I'm gonna be doing some message shout outs in the beginning of the videos based on comments from the last or previous video. Our first comment is from Anum Rajput. I hope I'm saying that correctly. And it was from the No One Gets Out Alive uh, Adam Neville book review I just did a few days ago. And they say, how can one look scary, but at the same time, cute? P.S. Added to my TBR. Well, first off, hell yeah, I'm adding that book to your TBR because it is horrifying and terrifying. And we're gonna talk about it for a minute today. Um, but if you think I'm scary and cute, then you've never met Lucas the Spider. Though I'm not really sure how good his book reviews are, so. Let's go ahead and begin the spoopy book tag questions. A book that scared you while you were actively reading the words on the page. Well, that is really, really easy. And like I said, we were gonna talk about this book for a minute and it's no One Gets Out Alive by Adam Neville. And yes, I just finished reviewing this book, so I won't get too deep and heavy into it if you want, want to watch that review. Terrifying. Uh, it's just a terrifying page turner. It's a survival horror. It is um, psychological and supernatural. It is just really scary. Most And most of this book, it was just being afraid of actually turning the page. Uh, in some aspects, because you just, you know it's, it's not gonna be good. <laughs> Question two, a book that you didn't find scary while reading it, but after you had the time to think about it and sit with it, you became frightened, scared, or creeped out. And that book for me was Pen Pal. This when I was reading it, it was definitely creepy, but I, but the more I kind of thought about the events and how they were taking place, it was definitely creepy. It just became creepier and creepier after the fact. This book started in No Sleep on Reddit, so it has that vibe. It sort of feels like it's real, but you know that it's not, but it definitely feels possible. Um, and that adds to the creep factor. I will say that the first half of this book is perfect and the last, I don't know, quarter of it was kind of mm, for me, but it was still a really good read. Question three. A book that was so creepy that you still think about a scene from it years later. Um, so I don't know about years later. Uh, so some of you may know that I started reading intentionally like December of 2018 and the all the years kind of before that I was just, you know, I read a book every once in a while. It wasn't always horror. It was So I'm going to be basing this off of the books that I've just um, began to read in this last year or so. This is a really good, unsettling read um and there are scenes in here that you just you know you don't want to see but um you kind of have to <laughs> and they have characters that are unforgettable because they are just so despicable um so this this is something that occasionally it pops up in my mind you know certain scenes from this book question four a book that you couldn't finish because it was either too creepy or too gory. 
Now, as a horror reader, I don't think there is any book to creepy that I wouldn't better finish. I mean, possibly maybe to gory. I'm not into just gore for gore's sake. So I had sort of a bit of a hard time trying to go through my personal library to find a book, but I think what sort of fits here for this is Exquisite Corpse by Poppy Z. Bright. Now, this is a book that I am going to be finishing. It's just, um, it was just sort of in a space that I just didn't really want to be in for a little bit. Um, like Poppy's writing, it is lyrical and it's very beautiful and just has this way of getting inside of you. So this serial killer, uh, who's the main character of this book, or at least, you know, I, I'm only a short way in it. Um, he's, you know, he's a terrible human being. <laughs> um, but he's sort of funny sometimes and he's sort of interesting and sort of charming in certain ways. So I think like reading a, a, reading about a character like that, it can be conflicting inside of you. And I think that you need to be in the right mindset for it. And you know, like Poppy Z. Bright is so good at, is taking human experience and dressing it up in a very vulgar but captivating way and so yeah so so this is something that i need to be in the mood for and lately i have just i don't know i've just been kind of veering away from it but i will be getting back to this because the writing of course is just gorgeous the scariest creepiest book you've read based on a cult or group of people with sinister values and goals. So Last Days by Adam Neville does feature a cult uh, that is dabbling in things that they shouldn't be dabbling in. And a filmmaker is getting all caught up uh, in this world in a very dangerous way. And what's really cool is uh, Kyle Freeman is the film director for the documentary and his work is mentioned in No One Gets Out Alive. So that was kind of a cool little Easter egg to see in here. Question six. A horror book that takes place in an otherworldly location. Okay, so I don't really read a lot of like fantasy horror. I just don't. It's not that I don't like it. It's just, I think because I love hauntings and stuff like that and the supernatural, it just tends to be in like real world locations most of the time. Um, but I do have Honey Bones, which is a novella. Um, and it takes place in this kind of strange, dreamy, medicine-y, opium-like place. And I don't really know where this place is and exactly where it exists. Maybe it's the subconscious. It's very hard to tell, but this was definitely like uh, a fever dream. It has these sort of fairy tale, Alice in Wonderland kind of vibes. Um, there's a lot of bizarre uh, things that are happening. When I was reading this, I felt like I was sort of in a haze. Like I was just kind of floating through this story, um, but it was really, really cool. And I really enjoyed it. Question seven. A horror book where the main character or characters have to be or do something horrific in order to do what they deem as right or necessary. So I thought that a good choice for this would be The Plague Stones uh, by James Brogdon. So in this story, there is sort of kind of like this homeowners association who is uh, in charge of um, making sure like one of these historical homes, uh, you know, is taken care of. And so they have these methods and they do these things that they think is going to ensure that. And uh, so, yeah, so th this one <laughs> definitely fits this question very well. Um, I really enjoyed this. This was very, very fun. Um, I, I really like this a lot. Question eight, your favorite horror book that takes place in the summer. So, I was almost in despair, <laughs> but then I remembered I have Dolly. This is a great book. It takes place in summer um, and it's sort of like a coming of age. Um, 
like as most summer stories <laughs> seem to be. Um, it's a coming of age story about a young boy who spends a summer with his uh, cousin, a uh, female cousin, who um, seems to just be very angry about everything and sort of selfish and uh, self-concerned. And so it talks about that summer and then it goes into when they grow up and you know, there's a there's spooky elements here. This is a very good uh, short read. I, I love Susan Hill's writing so much. Question nine, a horror book that felt like you were actually watching or reading the script for a classic horror movie. So I have the perfect book for this. And it's not really a classic horror movie um, per se. Uh, when I was reading this book, it was kind of more of a classic 1930s movie. The dialogue, the characters, the time period, uh, it's just so well done and so cool. If you like old film, you would love this. Um, and it's the the diviners, which I have been calling the diviners for a very long time, but Kathy was nice enough to tell me that I was saying it wrong, and it's the diviners, which makes sense. But this takes place in um, New York City in the 1920s, and you have your jazz clubs, and you have your flappers, and your parties, and your girl who runs away the carpet bag type situation. She and her friends kind of find themselves in this situation where uh, they need to kick some supernatural butt. And this was so fun, oh my God. But the what really got me was the, the dialogue between the characters, the, the author, Libba Bray. She really researched the vernacular of that time period. It was like watching My, uh, my Girl Friday, but like, <laughs> with supernatural elements, which would have been so great. Question 10, a horror book that's not scared to utilize modern technology. Okay, it's not technically horror, but The, Tr uh, the Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware is damned good. And it is like one of the best uses of like the the I home, you know, like the completely integrated house that does everything from opening your drapes to making your coffee at a certain time, uh, locking doors, um, recording uh, any type of visual or audio um, activity. Technology is one of the characters in here. It's definitely a force and it's something that the main character has to maneuver and try to circumvent and it, it's so so good and so interesting and that's not even the most interesting part of this book i mean this i recommended this to one of my friends amy and she read it and she, she devoured it in like a couple of days and she messaged me and she was like that is fucking amazing and i was like i so it's one of the greatest thrillers I've ever read, and it's gonna be really hard now to find one to, uh, I don't know, meet these standards, I guess. Question 11. A horror book that was written before the year 2000 that you felt was ahead of its time. Oh, yes. Okay, so. You know, this is one of my favorites. Naomi's Room by Jonathan Aikliffe, with also my most favorite author portrait <laughs> ever made. Um, he just looks like he's gonna lecture me on cigarettes and tell me like, you know, ladies don't sit with their legs open or something, you know, like some type of high school teacher or something. This book was written in 1991, 1991, and it, it, it's tricky, this one, um, and it's uh, very sneaky. Like it, it holds its hands so close to its chest, like you, you don't know what's gonna happen. And it's not like you're like, oh, something's gonna happen because it's ramping up. It's like, no, it's like it's kind of going and it's going and it's going and then bam. And uh, this to me was really sophisticated. Um, really tricky. Uh, it it really um, it really does a number on the reader. I think it was darker and more brutal than I expected. 
It was way more fucked up than I ever anticipated. It went to a place I never thought it would go. It completely lulled me into a sense of complacency where I thought, I mean, the story was good, you know, but I was like, okay, you know, I kind of get what the gist is. And then I realized I didn't know anything about anything. If you haven't read this and you like supernatural shit and you like it to be all fucked up, this is a good one. <laughs> Question 12, a book that you feel greatly changed or influenced the horror genre for years to come. On Instagram and YouTube, you guys selected The Black Cat by Edgar Allan Poe for me to read for the creepy reads and I had never read it before. Um, and uh, it was, I read it from this book, which is like, I love this book, it's so pretty. And to me, that story was really modern. You know, it was psychological and it was talking about um, sort of how one's self can be changed by alcohol and how that can affect um, the people and animals around them and this sort of spiraling down into some type of creature yourself because you are kind of in the grips of alcoholism. I thought that it was written in a way that was, it was very palpable and very visceral. And it was very, um, like it, there was nothing about it that seemed romantic or flowery, flower, flowery, it wasn't very poetic, at least in that sense, and it and it didn't use a lot of flowery like language. It was just this. It was just really dark, and I did not expect that from a story from 18 whenever, and I was greatly impressed. So I, I've only really read like his poetry mostly, and. It really took me by surprise, and now I understand why he's one of the greats. Last question. A horror book that is so unique that you've yet to come across anything like it. So the book that I chose is A Taste for Monsters. And the reason why I chose this book for this question was because the characters are very unusual. Our main character is a young girl who suffers from Fosse Jaw, or phosphate jaw. She ends up becoming a personal nurse to the elephant man, who was a real person who actually existed, Joseph Merrick, um, who is known uh, historically to be a very kind person and someone who enjoyed poetry and uh, writing letters and, and meeting people. He seemed to be a very sweet individual. Um, so we have this historical character, Joseph Merrick, and in the background, we also have Jack the Ripper. And swirling around all of that, we have spirits of Jack the Ripper's victims. It's a very unusual grouping of um, characters, I think, that I would never ever expect. It's not like one of those stories where I'd say it's terrifying and super scary or anything, but it does have these really creepy, chilling moments. It has these wonderful relationships and also just it's just kind of like a beautiful story a beautiful dark story i think i read this in uh, early 2019 and i still think about it like i still it still just pops up in my mind and it's so beautifully written um and the author uh matthew j kirby he's actually uh written some books for assassin's creed I did ask uh, Matthew J. Kirby how he came up with this concept and, and he said that he was doing some research and he, he found that Jack the Ripper and uh, the Elephant Man existed in the same time period in the same place in uh, London. So he kind of used that as like a jumping off point. If you want to read something that is just like a really good story, it's, it's a beautiful story, it's sad, it does have creepy moments, um, unsettling moments, a little bit of mystery, it's really, really good. So I guess in my library, I don't, really, I don't have any other books that have such a unique combination of historical characters that actually existed. 
So if you want to know more about these books, I have done full reviews for every single book that you've seen here, except for Exquisite Corpse, because I'm still in the process of reading that one. So you can check those out on my channel if you'd like to. So that's it for me. I hope that you enjoyed this book tag. Um, I guess I would like to tag a few people. I will tag Typical Books, Lydia, because I think that she would have some really fabulous answers for this. Cameron Cheney. He's another one that has a lot of like vintage books and, and stuff. And Bookworm of the Damned. So if you guys have already been tagged, um, no worries. And no pressure to do the tag either, of course. So that is all for me. I hope that you enjoyed this book tag. Thank you so much for spending your free time with me today. I really appreciate that. If you liked this video, please hit like and subscribe. It would mean a lot to me. Please take care of yourself, wear a mask, watch out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.